Hello, good morning, everyone. Welcome to day number 22 and 23, but I'll get to that in a second, of 66 days of data with Naim. So before we start, let's have a, click, a quick view on what we're going to learn in this specific live stream. So in this live stream, we are going to talk once again about our beloved release date column. If you remember the last videos, we basically adjusted it a little bit. We had some release dates which were full, like year, month, day. We had some release dates that were just a year or just a year and the month. And if you have missed that, make sure to post a comment down below. I'll make sure I point you to the right videos. Also, if you want to get the good ebooks, the quality ebooks from Nine Press for free, 100% discount voucher, if you mail me at phil at procurementzen.com, that's phil at procurementzen.com. All right. So yesterday, I must apologize for yesterday because I had some severe network issues and I couldn't stream live, which means in return, we're going to do two live streams today. But with all this admin stuff aside, now let's start into today's topic. And today's topic, let me just quickly share the screen with you. Today's topic is, of course, here on the page of 66 Days of Data with Nime. And we are ending section number four, date standardization. We have only two more tasks, which we will do in today's live streams. And for this live stream in the morning that we do right now, we are going to transform all values in the release date column into a date and time object. So check that no release date values are missing. So you can read a little bit more here about the date and time integration, explore using date and time formats on the NIME blog. But here is also already a hint what node in NIME we might want to use, and that is the string to date and time. So let's make, let's head over to NIME and let's have a little excursion about data types. So if we look, right click on any of these tables here, we see these little icons here right in front of each column heading. And what this basically means is, hey, Naim is telling us, this is our understanding what data type this is. And if you compare this, for example, to Microsoft Excel, you have that as well. And there it is called number formats. So you can format a number as text or as a number. And if you do it as text, you cannot calculate with it, just as an example. So you see, as in this regard, stands for string, meaning Naim understands this as textual data. Whereas, for example, I stands for integer, which is a whole number. And the difference between the two is with integers, with numbers, you can do, for example, mathematical calculations. If we look at the popularity of this very song here in row zero, we could multiply with um, the row number six. The thing is, we could not multiply with the name. What should we do with that, right? What, what would that be? But we can do other stuff. So today's task is, and you see that here in our beloved release date column, you see that this is basically identified as a string. And the reason for that is that you, if you remember the previous steps that we did, that it was not consistent. There were sometimes only years, there were sometimes year and month, and then there were complete release dates. So Naim said, well, I do not have a consistent date, so I identify this as dashes and numbers, which in return tells me it is a string slash text. So what we're going to do now is we are going to change the release date into the data type date and time. But before we do that, we just have a look. Um, and it sorts now descending. So with this data type, it takes a moment. We just want to make sure that we do not have any missing values. And we have 586,000 lines here. So that's the reason why it took a moment. And if we would have missing values, we would see red question marks. And a missing value per se is not a bad thing. 
right? So that is that's not something where we say, oh, that's an error or something. No, it's just telling, hey, that is basically an empty cell. I don't know what to do with it. And NIME has some very diligent notes for dealing with missing values. But we have checked there are no missing values in the release date. So let's turn it into a date and time type column. And the node we're going to use for this is called string two. And then we have date and time. And you see, we have it here. Other data types, time series, transform, string to date and type. So we tie this to our last node. We see that the last node, the concatenate node from our last video is still selected. We identify this by the black border that is around it. And we just double click string to date and time. And then we need to tell Nime, okay, which string do we want to convert? Because if you remember this view here, there are quite a few strings, right? And per se, the machine is a little bit, well, I would say dumb. So it does not know which one. So we tell it. We tell which one do we want to convert. We want to convert the release date. And here comes a very cool feature of NIME. We want to have, so it's called date and time, data type, but we only want the date. And we have this nice little button here that says guess data type and format. So we click it. And then we see content of the first cell, 1922-02-22. Well, that looks pretty good. So let's give this one a try. So we say, OK. And we, of course, say convert release date to date and, date and time like this. And we, of course, mark this as bold as it is a column heading. And we say execute. And then we have a look at the result. So release date, it worked. So now you see Nime could do the conversion for our nearly 600,000 cells and it um, the icon changed. So it is no longer an S that indicates a string. No, it's now this little calendar icon which tells Nime, okay, this is now a date and time um, data type. And the amazing thing, and that's what we're going to do later today in our second video, is we can do quite interesting stuff with dates. For example, we could do what is called time series. We could make projections or predictions based on time. Or we can use differences. If you sometimes maybe you have done this in Microsoft Excel, if you're coming from a finance background like me, and in Microsoft Excel, for example, there is oftentimes the need to calculate the difference between certain dates, like how many, if you're looking at payment terms, I'm coming from a procurement background, right? So this was our target payment term. When did we pay? Is there a difference? Did we lose money by paying early or late or whatever, right? So you can do all this kind of stuff with dates, which is a quite interesting function. So let's just quickly head back to NIME here. And in the very next step, because this basically concludes what we wanted to do in this video, in the very next step, we're going to extract the year from the release date. And then we wrap all notes from this section into a meta note. Because if you look at this, our workflow grew quite substantially over the last few videos. So my approach here, once again, was using string manipulation, having um, a row splitter, having um, another row splitter, then string manipulation again, concatenate string to date and time. Oh, and one thing I'd also like to do here is we still have this helper column here, right? Release date length. And in the last video, I said I might want to get rid of it. So I'm going to do this right now. I use a column filter for this. And the column filter basically um, rules out certain columns. So what I do is I double click this one, configure it and say, hey, which column do I want to, uh, which columns do I want to keep? Well, basically all except for the release date. And maybe a quick, um, you have seen me using this kind of configuration windows quite a bit. So maybe I give you a quick overview. Basically, this is the part that's going to exclude 
this is the part that's going to be that's going to stay and you see this also by the very clear visual language of now I'm green and blue and I'd like to point you a little bit to these enforce inclusion and enforce exclusion so basically if we say enforce exclusion Nime is exactly looking at this specific um specific column header in our example this is not a big issue but sometimes you might want to run workflows every week every day every month with new data sets all the time and if the data sets changes this might be coming forward because it means it looks exactly for this and it means we keep all of these um, no matter what their name is right so it really focuses on release date length if we would say enforce inclusion Nime would focus on keeping all of these with exactly these names and exclude everything else. But that's not what we want to do. We want to exclude the release date length helper column. So we say, okay, um, we label it um, clean up calls. Let's say delete release. No, let's, let's put it like this. Um, no, we just say delete helper release date length da -da. so we bold it as it's a column heading and then we say okay and it's done now the release date length you can see it here in the node monitor is gone so that's basically it for today as i said before if you have any questions make sure you leave a comment below this video. I will post another video later on today where we finalize basically what we need to do in the date and time standardization before tomorrow we are going to dive into the next section. And that very next section will be about ungrouping and aggregations. And we will have four interesting tasks there before we going to draw our very first plot and our very first chart. So make sure that you subscribe and follow me wherever you're watching this. Once again, if you want to get the discount voucher worth $20, make sure you mail me at phil at procurementzen.com and look out for the second video we're going to publish today, which then basically is day three, then day 23 in 66 days of data with none. See you later. Bye-bye.